<laughs> yes, you got the cabbage patch going on. <laughs> I can't do the Roger the running Rabbit. Running man. I can't do a sinning. Oh wait, was that the Rubber, Roger Rabbit? Or the no, I can't do. The... I, I can't do the Roger okay. Rabbit. Too complicated. Okay. All righty, here we go. It is Friday, May 24th, 2019. I'm Micah Sargent, and right now we are going to talk about that new MacBook Pro. We're going to talk about uh, WWDC coming up and those invitations that went out. Ooh. Also, Harry Potter, Harry Potter. I don't know what that is, but I do know what Harry Potter is. <laughs> Harry Potter Wizards Unite. We've got some uh, some news and and potential launch dates there and some stuff about the iPod Touch, as well as something that I'm going to mention here on the show uh, that we don't currently have in the show notes. So it'll be a surprise. <laughs> it'll be an adventure <laughs> because this is the iMore Show. Joining us this week is all the way from, from Good Cop Canada. <laughs> it is Renee Ritchie. How are you, Renee? Good, bunk up, bad cop. I was just telling Micah and Lori before the show that they're making a version of Brooklyn Nine Nine for Quebecers, uh, and it's just it's going to be fantastic in the way that bunk up, bad cop was fantastic. So tabernak, tabernak, tabernak. Yes, three tabernaks. That's what we're going to go for. <laughs> I don't understand what you just said, but I like the idea that um, there's going to be a Canadian, French Canadian version of of um, Brooklyn Nine Nine. I think that's going to be pretty fun. Also. After you talked about it, I'm definitely going to track down. Is it bad cop, bond cop, or bond cop, bad cop? I think it's bond cop, bad cop, but I'll take okay. all that. I'm going to track yeah. that down and watch it because it really sounds fun. iTunes or something, I want to see this for sure. Yeah, if you ever want to understand Georgia and me uh, or where we live. <laughs> I always do because understanding yeah. Georgia is the only way to get her on the show. You'll notice yes, she's not here with us this week, but Once again. joining me from bad cop, California, <laughs> it's Lori Gill. How you doing, Lori? I think we can call that badass cops. Oh, <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> oh, man, I just finished season two of Cobra Kai. It is so good. I haven't even started so, it yet. Oh, uh, it is so good. I, just, really? I cannot watch that show enough. It is It is a homage, but also like they, they, they're, they're, self, they're self-aware enough not to be too serious about it. It's just yep. so perfect. And you'll like started, it because like, it's like badass metallic. Like the guy's still rocking his Metallica shirt, but like back from when they're good, it's like it was really, it's really awesome. Yeah, I, I begrudgingly started watching. I started watching Cobra, the first season of Cobra Kai as part of um sort of a review and testing of uh, YouTube TV. Yeah, and found oh. myself watching the entire season, and then convinced my significant get other to watch it and rewatched every episode loving it again the second it's time the only show they kept they canceled everything else and now they were yeah. renewed this for a third season it's amazing yeah it's a it's a fun show it does the perfect yeah. in between of um sort of making all of us fans of the original uh um karate kid stuff it, it kind of brings that nostalgia back but it also yeah. tells a brand new story so that you're not just rehashing the same stuff and i don't know it's, really, it's got some good characters season. They they tell them they take their daughter's phone away and say go to your room and she's like fine and they're like leave the Apple Watch too and she's like no that's not fair oh. she, she knew she could still stay and like do everything on her Apple Watch yeah <laughs> technology uh, parents are getting smarter my my they they are they're getting smarter and uh, they you know, I can't remember what podcast I was talking about this on but they are doing a lot more um, tracking of of their kids yeah. and it kind of gets uh, it gets a little gets a little Squidgy, I guess. Can we start with some terrible it. news? And, and it just as so we're not a downer at the end of the show? You definitely would like to start with Snapchat, is what I'm guessing. Snapchat and Gmail. So, like, so let me just set the stage. Apple's been making a big deal about privacy at a lot of their shows recently. And when they say privacy, they mean data that even Apple doesn't have access to. And if Apple has access to it, Apple keeps it only for as long as they need and then purges it. So minimal data kept for as little time as possible and no data prefer preferentially. And then Mark Zuckerberg gets up on stage for Facebook and he says, we're going to do privacy. And people like literally laugh. And then he tries to laugh. And it's so awkward because Ugh. it's like his programming, his emotion chip wasn't properly installed. <laughs> um, but what he meant by, by privacy was encryption. And that doesn't mean anything because like they don't like if Lori and I are chatting over Facebook, he doesn't need to know what we're saying. He just wants to know. Renee and Lori were chatting. They were at these physical locations. They chatted starting at this time and that time. Like, he has so much data for him there anyway. So it's really meaningless. And then 
Sundar Pichai gets up on stage at Google I.O. and he says, privacy, like we're going to be private and not just for people who can afford it, which to me is like so offensive. It's like, oh, if you can't pay for dinner, we have other ways that you can pay us. And like, no, that's just, <laughs> that's, no, that's not okay. Right. That's um, creepy. <laughs> you, know, you can't pay for your rent. We'll make an arrangement. No, Sundar, no, yeah, we won't. <laughs> Uh, but they, what they were talking about is like, you can delete your information. And I'm like, cool. And he goes, and, but the starting is like three months. And I'm like, that's not privacy. That's data retention rules. Um, so they were trying to devalue the meaning or, 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 or obliterate the meaning of privacy. And then like a week later, CNBC notices that if you go to this Google link, which they say was for our convenience, but apparently is really hard to find, um, and they say you can delete it, but you can only delete one item at a time. And there's like lists of everything you've ever bought. And I didn't realize it, but because I'd used my old, my original Gmail address for iTunes, it had every single iTunes purchase no in it. No way. It had every single purchase in Amazon because I used that for my original Amazon account. So everything I'd bought, when I bought it, how much I'd paid for it. <gasps> I want to find this link. Where's this link? This I'll you put it here. It's like slash purchases or something. I'll find it for you. Yeah. But, and we'll put it but, in the show notes too. <laughs> and like, and because there was like dates and stuff, they knew when it was supposed to be arriving, if it had arrived, like all oh. of this information. And apparently there was other ones I, I haven't looked yet for like travel and transportation and things that they were just sucking out of your Gmail. And they're like, we don't use this for advertising. <laughs> that is the least of my concerns right yeah, now. Yeah, it's like, why do you have <laughs> this? I just need to, yeah, I don't care what you use it for or don't use it for. Why do you have this on me? I don't like this. And some people don't care. They're like, you know, like like I, I heard Georgia and Mr. Mobile talk about it on Twitter because Georgia will still go on Twitter, of course. Um, <laughs> I yeah, heard them what's that about? about? <laughs> I need to write that down, actually. And you do that. that because, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Leo and Mr. Mobile were like, and Michael Fisher were like saying, you know, they, they, they don't mind doing it because they get served services and quality of services in exchange for it. But my thing is this, it's a second copy of my data. And let's say I'm paranoid and I go through every month and delete my Gmail. That does not delete their lists of my purchases. That does not delete their lists of my travel. So it's effectively another copy of my data. And that just by inherently is not secure because that means that someone could subpoena it. Um, that means that someone could abuse it. And we just, to put the cherry on our crappy Privacy Sunday, Snapchat uh, employees were found abusing their access to data to spy on us. And it's not unimaginable that like, like whether people hack into Google or Google employees spy on us or Snapchat, just that second copy of data makes us so much more vulnerable. Renee, I found the link. Yes. And th this, thing, <laughs> this thing knows that I ordered a salad um, oh God! It knows that I ordered a salad two days ago. Um, it knows about a restaurant I went to in Kansas City. Um, it knows all of my Audible purchases. It has when it with the purchases for like Amazon. It actually has the uh, these were delivered or these were not delivered and estimated times. It knows that I went to Kansas City to watch uh, Pokemon Detective Pikachu. Oh it God. knows. The row I sat in and the seats I had. I, it is so creepy. I it knows when I reloaded my Starbucks card. Yeah, me too. I hate this. It's everything old comes back to bite you right in the apps. I, <laughs> I'm so grossed out right now. Yeah. Holy, I, I'm sorry. So, I know. Holy moly. Ugh. I know. It's I, like I, nobody expects this. I have to kind of jump in and I, like, obviously this is pretty terrifying, right? I, there's no, no question about it. My mom doesn't um, just know knowing that they have this information <laughs> and that we didn't know that they had this information until it was brought to light. Um, but it, it's not new that this kind of thing is happening. It, Google is not special in that they're doing it. Um, when I got my Gmail account back in two. 1000 I guess it was um I I didn't even have to add like extra numbers or letters because it was still so new you had to be invited to use it yep I could tell right away as soon as I got I I wasn't using it very much at first because I could tell right away that they were advertising to me within the Gmail inbox therefore they were obviously collecting data about me um when I would visit other sites and things like that or um, I remember back way back then there was this big to do because somebody might send you an email that said something like, um, oh, have you seen the new, you know, MacBook that's out? And then you would have ads 
next to that email of MacBooks. And so people were like, Google's reading our emails. And then they had to come out and say, we're not reading your emails. That We have this, this algorithm that finds these words and then presents these ads to you based on that. I even had a signature line that had all these offensive words in it. This is before I was, you know, corresponding with people that were important so I could get away with it. It had offensive words in it because that would break that that algorithm and stop it from presenting ads to me. Um, so I, you know, there's it's been going on for a really long time, and it, I I agree that it's terrible, but we should have known better. We should know better. You should, at this point, you should have known that Google was doing this kind of stuff. And instead of being surprised by it, which we still are, we should be working toward trying to figure out how we can ask Google to make it easier for us to see the kind of data that's being collected on us. Like this, this purchasing thing is something brand new to me. I did not know about this before. This is something that Google should have made very available and very transparent all along. That, that, that they have this information that that we can access, you know? So it's, again, it goes back to the the company's transparencies and and just like Georgia and Mr. Mobile saying, um, we don't mind that they collect this data on us because in exchange for it, we get these great services. I agree with well, Georgia that. Wants I to use be paid. Gmail. Like Georgia thinks they should give her a hundred bucks or something a week for taking this data. Yeah, I mean, well, I think we're worth more than that, but um, that's that's a good one too. But what's more important is that we don't get we don't get to know about it. They don't. There's no rule or law that forces these corporations to tell us what they're doing, how much they're collecting, and what they're doing with it, so that we can make those choices ourselves. We don't get to make any choices. And even if I don't away. have Gmail, if I email you, Google is scanning my email based on me sending it to you. So it's very hard to opt out. Mm hmm. I know, Micah. I feel you. Uh, oh boy, this is upsetting. I and you know, you're definitely right, uh, LG. That this is something that we should not be surprised by. But I think, um, I don't know. Even with the level of knowledge that we have, the it's still a shocker for us because I don't know. Like I did not expect that. I, I expected that if I plugged in my uh, my payment information into Google's stuff, then Google would track those purchases that I make with like Google Pay or Google Online Checkout and all those different forms. But to actually go and mark down all of these things to that level, to know that even the, the row and seat numbers of a movie ticket that I have are somewhere in Google's something is pretty scary and i think or, or at the very least it's upsetting and i think it makes it real it makes it real and if i were to show um i think this is one of those things like where you can show a family member you can show a person and they actually would get it where with other stuff uh, i was just talking to my partner the other day and it was about um oh Oh, it was about how televisions cost less because of the tracking that they do of what yeah. you watch. And if you sign up for any of the smart features, then you're getting tracked. And he was saying, well, why? Like, that seems okay to me. Like, I'm okay with that. I'll trade them knowing my activity if I get to have, um, you know, a less expensive television. And so what's the deal with that? And sort of trying to explain how these things can then be abused and how overall a lot of people just don't know about it in general. And that's the issue um, was well, kind of complicated, but this um, I think would even make him uncomfortable to see that there's that level of, of information available there. And that's over like, time, and because over like, time. I think most of us expected like they would look at our email, give us some ads and then it'd be gone. Mm -hmm. But like seeing years yeah. of it just preserved there is also feels different. Ag agreed. I don't. I don't want. I don't like anyone. I don't like myself to have that much information <laughs> on myself. You know what I mean? Like that. We we want to forgive and forget and live, love, learn, laugh, and not keep all of this horrible. Just I, I don't know. I'm gonna go back and see. I bought some stupid book that I wish I never bought. Yes. And it's like why did I? Why does Google know that? And why did I ever do that? I, I don't I don't like it, as the kids yeah. say. I don't like yeah. it. I, so here's one thing that kind of throws some terror in terror my way. Um, 
uh, under the payments and subscription sec section, um, it shows my reservations for a hotel that I'll be staying at soon that um, I didn't even use my own account to get those reservations. I went through our company um, uh, travel arrangements thing. So I I didn't go through Gmail to do it. I went through something completely different, but a, a reservation was sent to my Gmail and now it's showing up on my accounts um, with the dates and you know where I'm staying. And that feels a little creepy that, you know, that's there. <laughs> and, you know, if somebody figures out how to break in, then, then they have access to that. You know, it's, it's, which is the Snapchat story again, because people were yeah. breaking into Snapchat data to sort of spy on. And we saw the NSA sort of track their ex wives and girlfriends and stuff like the NSA was doing it. Um, it just, if they have that data, the potential for abuse is there. And there are people yeah. who go to extreme lengths, like, uh, like I forget her name. There was a woman did a magnificent thread saying, if you travel a lot, you get harassed and you learn to like not let anyone say your, your room number out loud, not to put your room number on any receipt, not to tell anybody what hotel you're staying at. Um, and these are all like, they sound like trivial concerns to some people, but they're life and death concerns to other people. And just, you don't want that information anywhere. Mm -hmm. Or you, you especially want to know where it is so yeah. that you can keep track and hide it or remove it where, where possible. Um, you know, if I, if I, it, you know, example, if I make reservations at a hotel and then it's just somehow just out there for everyone to, to see, or at least like, you know, the tech people under certain companies, I want to be able to go to each one of those places that I know it exists and hide it or delete it on my own, I but I need to be told in, at the yeah. beginning that that actually exists, that it, that they are being held in these different places. I don't even know that. I don't even know where, where that is taking place. Yeah, um, any, any other, any, any Snapchat specific uh, thoughts, Mike? Are you just ready to burn the entire internet down now? Yeah, today, today I am uh, taking a step into the internet uh, I'm separating from my body, going into the internet, and just lighting it all on fire. Yeah. Um, so you know, it was fun while it lasted, but it's time to time to say goodbye. Uh, you know, let I, me let me bring up two quick things, really quick. Yes. We're completely changing the subject. Number one, Micah, your watch band is gorgeous. I don't know what it is ooh, or ooh. where you got it, but Renee yeah. actually, uh, this was a gift from Renee. It's a the, it was a Robin um, Apple watch band. Uh, it was Apple's leather band. And I changed out the lugs so it matched my um, oh, it's, block, uh, my sorry, blue fire. It's yes. beautiful. I love that color. They don't carry that anymore, do they? I don't think they do. Yeah, no. it's it's a good looking Apple Watch. And second, Renee, what is that beautiful silver shiny thing behind you? Yeah, Can you please what tell is us? that? Huh? <laughs> uh, that is a silver play button from the gentle folks at YouTube. Uh, thanks to all of you folks who are watching and subscribing, you magnificent people. I hit uh, 100,000 subscribers a week or so ago, and YouTube sent that my way. Yay! Aww. Congratulations. Yeah. That's amazing. It's uh, when when you you posted a tweet on it today um that you know just a, a quick thank you to everybody which you know obviously you you can't do what you're doing if it weren't for the people that love to watch you um on Vector. But I thought immediately, well of course. Of course you did. <laughs> uh, and and you're going to hit gold very fast too. I mean, oh, I, I don't know. Anybody who watches even a single one of these videos and I know you're Canadian and you can't handle compliments. <laughs> 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 but anybody who watches any of these vector videos immediately understands like they're not just a person who's talking about tech. They're a person who goes and does research and anal analyzes things and digs deeper. You know, anytime somebody says something like the new keyboard on the MacBook Pro isn't isn't any better than it was before. Renee doesn't just go, no, it's not. He actually goes and he talks to people. He does some research. He finds out about different chemical makeups of different pieces of material. <laughs> and then he says, OK, so here's what this is and here's what that is. It's so much more in-depth than than almost any of the things that I've ever seen um, on YouTube oh, when it comes to you. tech. I really appreciate and that. It's Lori. very informative and really, really helpful and important. Um, uh, so and everyone listening. So often too, like mm -hmm. very prolific. Uh, yeah, five, five a week almost usually. Sometimes yeah. more. <laughs> if y'all get tired of me, just tell me to hush up now and I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, I think everyone's right, saying more and more and more. Uh, but yes, <laughs> let's go ahead and move on uh, from deleting and destroying the internet. Uh, because, you know, there's still some some good parts about it that we yeah, like out there. Out there Mike. There's, there's good in this world. There is good in this world. Um, so let's start by talking about the new MacBook Pro bum, 2019. Bum, bum. It's here. Uh, it's been torn down by by uh, the folks at iFixit to look at the that new keyboard mechanism. Well, really, it's just the new keyboard material, yes. um, updated material to hopefully make the buttons function better and uh, to, to, I don't know, give it even a better feel. I, I'm not sure. So let's talk about it, Renee, because you put out a video about it and uh, also published a post over on iMore. So what are your yeah. first thoughts? So I haven't had a chance to actually put one through its paces yet because with WWDC coming up, there's just no time. I'm hoping to do that uh, after we survive the big show. But I did get the chance to talk to Apple about it. Um, and the things that they stressed are actually, I guess, two of the biggest controversies surrounding these laptops in general. The first, and it's, it's weird. It's so weird for me to call this a controversy, but in the 15-inch model, they're getting Intel's new ninth generation Coffee Lake refresh. And yes, we've gotten to the point where Intel is now releasing refreshes of chips because they're still nowhere near new chips, just like nowhere near. And these are eight core chips. Previously, we had four cores. Then recently, we got six cores. Now we have eight cores. And they go up to turbo boost of five gigahertz. Now, this is controversial for the same reason I feel. Um, that megapixels were controversial. And that is people are both, people are are badly informed. I'm not going to say they're misinformed. They're badly informed about technology. Now, there are, the MacBook Pro is thermally constrained. Absolutely. You cannot put a chip as big uh, for a variety of reasons. I'll just go over them quickly. Intel has not been able to shrink their process, which means they haven't been able to make their chips smaller, which makes them more energy efficient. Uh, so is that is like restaurant style chip, restaurant style? No, the, 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 <laughs> the CP. So right now, Apple's down to seven nanometer in the iPhone, but they're still at 14 nanometer for Intel's process. Intel's trying to go to 10 or seven. And that means they could put more, more compute power in the same space because they can't do that. They're going back to their old trick of throwing more cores in it. But those cores now have to live in the same space that Apple designed in 2016, anticipating those smaller chips. And it just means that Apple is running them at the thermal limits, like around 100 degrees. They're letting them get real hot. And if they reach over that, they're ramping down the speed to, to keep them from basically melting. Um, and this really upsets some people. And you, you see a lot of YouTubers and a lot of bloggers being really upset about it. And it, for not for totally illegitimate reasons, like if these computers were bigger, if they had bigger fans, if they had bigger, if they were built like gaming PCs, it wouldn't be a problem. They could go at full frequency for extended periods of time. But gaming PCs, you often can't unplug them. And if you do, you get like an hour of battery life and they're huge. It's like literally carrying a sink around with you. <laughs> so you have like, it, it's like that old joke. You can have um, uh, performance, you can have thinness or you can have uh, maximum frequency duration and you have to pick two of those. You can only right. have two. Yeah. So these, what Apple does, Apple has no problem. They don't believe there's any issue with running at thermal maximum. Uh, some people don't like it, but Apple says if they can go 100 degrees, we're going to run them at 100 degrees. And also Apple believes that what most people consider to be uh, one workload isn't really heterogeneous. Like even if you're, well, first of all, there's a bunch of really small burst workloads, like loading a web page, which which loads tons of little elements and all of those can get you know peak performance mm -hmm. or loading apps, all those kind of things. But also even like rendering something or compiling something within that big job, there are all these small little jobs that it can still tackle across those cores. And because most modern benchmarking software doesn't sample at a high enough rate, it misses a ton of the little ups and downs that go on where it is peaking, crashing, peaking, crashing, peaking, crashing. And that overall is higher performance than if it just stayed at that level. So on one hand, you have a bunch of really well-meaning tech nerds who I think are a generation or two behind in their understanding of the technology, mm -hmm. uh, but also legitimate constraints. Like they're absolutely legitimately constrained computers. And on the other side, you have Apple, which is saying, when we tell you you'll get 60% faster final cut loads, we mean that. 
yes, the yes, the computer is constrained, but within those constraints, we're still giving you a uh, hundred more logic. Um, uh, filters. We're still giving you much faster Photoshop filter processing. We're still giving you those 60% faster renders in Photoshop. So while you're not getting everything you could get, you're still getting so much more than what you had that we feel that on, like in some, it's still worth it. That makes so sense. that's sort of their take on that. And the second thing, and I'll shut up after this, I promise, <laughs> is the keyboard, uh, which has been hugely controversial. Some people hate it, some people like it. I happen to like it, but I hate that other people hate it. Because mm -hmm. when you have one vendor, you can't afford to have a keyboard that any large segment hates. It's just not tenable. Um, and nobody really hated the old keyboard. But right. it's also had, um, it's hard to tell what the exact failure rate is because Apple says it's it's not significant, but other people say, you know, we're just living with it. We're not taking it in. So Apple has no idea what our real pain and suffering is. So fair enough. Uh, but. Apple has not been able to redesign it yet. I, I do feel like a redesign is incoming. It was not ready yet. So what they've done is changed the material. According to iFixit, according to Apple, they just said the material of the mechanism. It is the same mechanism, same third generation butterfly, but the material they made the domes out of has been changed. And according to iFixit, also the membranes, which should prevent the, the uh, double letters that some people were seeing. And that and, will keep those restaurant style tortilla chips from getting underneath yeah. the keyboard. <laughs> I mean, we'll see. It's it's. If you hate the keyboard, you're still going to hate it. If you had failure rates, some of those failure rates may go away. I have last year's model, and I'm not. I I just can't afford to take my computer in. So I please don't do this at home. Don't ever do this. I just pop the keys off, clean them, pop them back on, um, using iFixit's guide, ironically, and it's fine. Like I've managed to fix any issue I've had for the last year and a half that way. I could very easily break a key, though. That's the risk I'm taking by doing yeah, it. Yeah, one time I did that with not even the butterfly mechanism. I just did it. Um, my magic keyboard, that's what this is called, right? I always that's forget what scissor, they call yeah. it. Is it double, triple magic? Anyway, magic. Uh, the D key stopped working uh, randomly. And it wasn't, you know, the whole, it wasn't what's going on with these keyboards. But I was like, oh, I'll just pop the key off and take care of this myself. And that was a mistake <laughs> um, because I accidentally broke one of the little pegs yeah. that clicks into the keyboard. So yeah, what Renee's saying, listen to him. Uh, do as he says, not as he does, as they say. Yeah. <laughs> I did break a key once, but I ordered a replacement over from Amazon. It came in like two days and I just popped it back on. Oh, nice. Yeah, I, yeah. I actually, uh, I, do, I am having a double, a double click issue oh, yeah. with, we talked with my about Mac that. Pro. I and I did, I took it in, right. And I got, I got, the, <sighs> they did their um, sort of in-store cleaning yeah. and they said, this is step one. And if it still doesn't work, then you just bring it back in. And it was originally, it was the Tiki and the I key and the Tiki mm -hmm. now is fine. The Tiki is fine. I love to drink Tiki <laughs> drinks. <laughs> um, but the I key has started double clicking again. And obviously I have to take it back in. Um, it's, I, I think, it's interesting how divisive the situation is. I think without the reliability issue, it still would have been a big deal because a lot of people did not like the rep the design, the new design, the um, butterfly key design. They wanted the scissor. Yeah. Um, so without a, re a reliability issue, we would still be talking about the keyboard because so many people have such a problem with it. But on top of that, and even though... To me, it seems like more than just a small number. It seems like a lot of people, like enough that a repair program should be in place for it. Um, but it's it, that doubled the the prob the original problem, which is people who just didn't like the design of it, which now has turned something that's not that big of a deal into, you know, the MacBook Pro is broken, the keyboard like is broken, active. Apple is broken, and <laughs> it's it's really. It's, that's not the case. Uh, first of all, this is a brand new keyboard design. The, it's never been done before. So obviously, you know, the first iteration is going to see some pain points. It's just like, you know, a brand new pair, like the very first AirPods or the very first HomePod. It's the very first butterfly keyboard design. So there's going to be some pain points and there's going to be some issues to work out and deal with. And right now um, we're on the fourth iteration of the key, of the butterfly keyboard design now there's a different type of material which you know obviously apple isn't saying 
that we put this in place to try to help with the reliability issue. They're not saying that. We just they did know. say that at the time. They, they officially said that it, yeah. it was to help with reliability. Okay, so there you go. So <clears throat> I, I think this, this, all, this is normal. This is growing into a new, a new means of a new method of using a butterfly keyboard, um, you know, with the, you know, bit, let's call it the beta version of the MacBook Pro um, butterfly keyboard. Um, there was some some issues, and they fixed it since then. And obviously, you know, anybody who's listening right now who says, I, you know, I I don't spend two thousand dollars on a computer that's a beta. That's that's a bad thing for Apple to do. They have constantly been working with customers to try to help them fix the keyboard problems. So they're not just saying, oh well, you know, we sent you, you know, we sold you a two thousand dollar MacBook, and it's got a a, a a not reliable keyboard, so you're stuck with it. Your problem. They say. We, we see that that there's issues with the reliability on this and we're gonna work with you to try to fix it so that your $2,000 MacBook Pro is still a good working computer. And Renee, to, to, there was one comment you made that said that um, you think that Apple should probably design redesign it. I think, I think that's have. what they're doing. I think that every time we get even the slightest change, even if it's just a material change, this is Apple's way of redesigning the butterfly keyboard. I think the butterfly keyboard should stay. I think it's a great design and it, it makes, um, the mobile computer, the the laptop, the notebook, whatever you want to call it, that Mac uses, that Apple uses for Macs, it makes it lighter, more efficient. Um, it it just overall is a better experience. There's just some reliability issues that need to be worked out so that people aren't afraid of investing in the in the butterfly mechanism uh, of a Mac of of any Mac because they all have it now. So obviously, Apple is on board and the butterfly design is the best design. They just have to get it so that it's reliable enough. And this is what they're doing. They are redesigning it in, in increments, trying to really focus in on what's causing the problem so that it can be fixed. And if it, it, the way they're going, I'm, you know, by 2020 at the latest, maybe even by the end of this year, maybe right now with the 2019 MacBook Pro, there's gonna be less reliability issues than there ever has been with any MacBook keyboard in all of its existence, because that's what they're doing. They're working so hard to fix it. that It's it's aware, everybody's aware of it, everybody's got a problem with it. So they're working harder than they ever did with a scissor keyboard mechanism to try to you know, increase its reliability. So I think that it's all moving in the right direction. And, and what we're seeing is that the, the butterfly keyboard is a great design and they're fixing that reliability problem. So my guess, like I, I think all of that is is true to a certain extent, but my guess is that it is so toxic and so radioactive now that they are going to be forced to replace it. And my the rumor is that it's going to be replaced with a modified scissor, not butterfly, but it, that also brings back the escape key and the inverted T arrow keys, mm -hmm. but it's just not ready yet. Uh, um, it's one of the things like the antenna on the iPhone. It's like if if Steve was still around, he'd be throwing it at people's heads and having a press conference and blaming us for typing wrong, but also <laughs> making sure like within seven months there was a new keyboard shipped. And I think you know Phil's probably doing that, but there's just so much stuff that Apple can't spin around and redesign it fast enough, and so they've tried to mitigate against it for the last couple of years, and it like the membrane didn't work, and we'll see like this will probably fix the double characters, but it probably won't fix some of the other stuff. Um, and they're just gonna, there's just so much like the other thing is uh, I said this before like like Casey Johnson did an article about it on the outline and it was just such it was outline style which was like I can't believe this is happening I went to this place I did this and I've seen this like on Business Insider and some other sites where like I went to the Mac the Apple store and it was a terrible experience I'm like that no like you you get like you get ten people to go to ten stores ten times and mm -hmm. then you filter down the results and you present like and Apple Insider has done that for the keyboard so kudos to them but I feel like it when if Casey had been writing that back when she was at Ars Technica that would have been like that would have been it. Apple would have had to change the keyboard immediately. There wouldn't have been any opportunity <laughs> to do anything else. And it's just, it's just become such a toxic social media thing where like Casey Neistat is complaining about it and anything that goes wrong is like, it's like the end of Mac engineering as we know it, that they won't be able to get back on stage again until they can say we have a new keyboard. That's my fear or my hope. I, that's, that's kind of how I'm feeling about it as well. It's uh, that, like you said, it's, it's, it's the name and it's this idea, like now that it's out there, you have to, to fix something. And I think for me, um, I 
try to constantly be aware of, again, I, I I've talked about it before, but I think that empathy plays a large role in reporting, uh, or rather, I think empathy should play a large role in reporting. And I think that in tech reporting, it often does not. And it goes as far as sort of, to me, kind of the, the opposite of empathy is a certain level of, of um, like a prideful belief that everything that happens to you is what happens to everyone. Yeah. And that's not how it works. And so when we think about, you know, the often the complaints that you hear are the are the folks who tend to um, to sort of be the ones who share, you know, their complaints often. And I should be clear here. This is not me saying that this is not a real problem or anything like that. Excuse me. Instead, I think it's important to keep in mind that like we said earlier, we don't know exactly how many people have had this issue. We don't know how many people have not brought in the computer and had this issue. They're fixing it and that's great. And whatever happens next happens next. But the idea that Apple can't just maybe come up with the, like, like Lori's saying, the best uh, butterfly mechanism. They have to instead go, this is called the caterpillar mechanism because we did a reverse metamorphosis yeah. <laughs> because that's the only way to fix this design and for everybody to be okay with it. Instead, they could have been innovating something else, but you know, that's, we've got to figure out like all just mentally, process. right? Like if they say the word butterfly, no matter what happens, people are still going to think it's broken. Yeah. Even if it's just like, yeah. uh, ha ha ha, we're joking about it. You know, those tweets then go on to regular news sites and people don't know sort of sar the sarcasm of it because they're not plugged in enough. It just, it all plays a role in turning what could potentially be a small story, could be a big story. You know, again, I I don't want to suggest that a problem should not be fixed. It absolutely should. But the idea that, you know, this does, I think it does have to be a name, cha name change because it is toxic, then that just adds a complication to it that is that doesn't need to be there. So yeah, I don't know. I, I if we can all always keep in mind, and like I have to remind my, remind myself of this constantly that what I am experiencing is not necessarily, you know, the the world that other people are experiencing. And um, just because it's happening to me and to my little uh, following choice on Twitter or what have you, um, doesn't mean that then that's suddenly just gospel and everyone everywhere is feeling that exact same thing. Uh, but what I can say is everyone everywhere is absolutely shopping using thrifter.com and there are no no's about that <laughs> um so if you head to <laughs> if you head to thrifter.com you can find thoughtfully selected tech deals from places like amazon and best buy and alerts about new products and games that are coming out you can find all sorts of awesome stuff and save money thrifter.com you sign up there you get those deals right to your newsletter right to your email rather that is a newsletter that gets sent to your email and you can check out all of those awesome uh curated deals or like i said head to thrifter.com because that's going to have every single deal or if you want to you can follow thrifter on twitter and uh keep up with the deals there Lori gill I hope you've had a chance to do a little bit of perusal over on thrifter.com and we'd love to hear about an awesome deal on the site. Yeah, so for me right now, the biggest deal that's happening is a big Memorial Day sale um, on Philips Hue lights, um, other smart things. Um, it's a, uh, it's being it's being kind of it's it's around the internet right now because it's such a big deal. But Thrifter was one of the first to to find it, and they have a beautiful layout of every single item that's on sale and the discount that you get for it, um, and anything that has like it's you know it's never been on sale this low before, or um, you know you 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 see this sale come up often. So if you can't get it now, it's okay to get it later. Like they they don't just tell you about the sale; they also tell you why it's a big deal, whether or not that you, you should grab it now because it's very rare that you'll see this kind of discount or even, you know, this comes up every six months. So, you know, if you don't want it now, you can wait, it'll probably be back. So not only this, again, 
this um, Philips Hue Memorial Day sale is a really big deal. And I love, I, I use all of my lighting as Philips Hue lighting. So um, I certainly am, am all about investing in it. But um, again, with Thrifter, it's not just telling you about the deals. It's telling you why these deals matter, why they're important, whether you should get it now. Just cost me so much money, Lori Gill. I know, I know. <laughs> Always and forever. Uh, that is Thrifter. You can also uh, head over to Twitter and follow Thrifter there. If you're in Canada, that's at Thrifter CA. If you're in the UK, that's at Thrifter UK. All those thoughtfully selected deals and uh, head to the site to sign up for the newsletter as well, where you can save money and spend money, but mostly save money, but also spend money, but save it. Uh, <laughs> thanks so much to Thrifter <laughs> for sponsoring this week's episode of the iMore Show. Let's move on because it's WWDC announcement dun, dun. or invite time. Uh, I yeah, <laughs> the invites have been sent out. We've <laughs> kind of known that uh, WWDC was c -c -c coming around, but uh, now we know exactly <laughs> when it's going to be. I and think Lori has something to tell us too. What is Don't that, LG? I got invited to the Apple event, the Apple keynote event for the first time, for the first time. Holy cannoli! I, I've been covering Apple for 13 years now, something like that. I was freelancing from a huge portion of it. So obviously I wasn't really kind of in, in with the in as good as I, I finally am now, thanks to my, my time with iMore. So thank you, iMore. Thank you, Renee, for, for that. <laughs> and I finally get oh, to you. actually sit in a chair at the keynote and and participate in the fervor and i'm very excited about it oh heck yeah, yeah. i can't wait till Lori goes woohoo go craig kill it tim <laughs> crush it yes <laughs> i'll be i'll be blazing metal while everybody else is like clapping i'll be like yeah <laughs> i'm glad you said metal and you didn't just stop at blazing because i was a little worried there for a second <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it is legal in California. That's so. true. You're saying. fine. You're good to go. That's true. Uh, <laughs> so exciting stuff. WWDC is going to be here. Um, we're going to be seeing all sorts of new software it's so soon. Uh, updates. It's coming. It's right around the corner. It's May 24th, folks. Uh, uh, yeah. I like not this Monday, but next Monday. I'm very excited, Renee. You said that you have a vector coming up. Um, yes. Where you spoke. And you know what? Lori and I have talked about this. You say his name the best of all of us. So can you tell us uh, what, who, the preview of WWDC you're doing? Key Rambo, the very talented um, developer, host of the Stack or co host of the Stack Trace podcast, writer for 9 to 5 Mac. Super, super smart. One, of, probably one of the best, smartest developers uh, in the world. And I was happy to sit down with him and sort of figure out what all this stuff might mean for developers and for us end users who just want to play with all the new toys. It's yeah. all the new toys, Micah. All the new software toys. And some of us uh, like to pretend that they barely, they barely, just barely touch the outside shell of the Kinder Surprise egg <laughs> that is being a developer. <laughs> I'm just like brushing up against the foil a little bit. Wait, so I, Americans know Kinder Surprise? I thought it was no, all illegal there. It is. It is. I just know. Oh, okay. It. You just no, know them. It, okay. it, it it was, but I think they've actually lifted that ban because okay. I see them in the stores all the time now. So oh, okay. I was trying to come to Canada and smuggle them out. I was trying to be, you know, culturally expansive there. Um, <laughs> so I didn't realize that we do have them in the U.S. now. But anywho, uh, point is, I not only just like to, as an end user, play around with stuff, but I also like to dig around in the developer stuff and play around with that, particularly when it comes to the smart home fun. So oh, I hope we get, so my big, no one has said this rumor that I know, of, but my big wish for this year is that Apple starts adding more stuff. Like I, I want to, I have a, I just bought a Roomba and I want a home kit Roomba, you know, like I want all of these different things to just work with home kit. Yes. And I know it's hard because Samsung bought smart things and Google bought nest and Amazon bought ring and Apple hasn't bought anybody. <laughs> and everyone who buys the other stuff doesn't seem to care too much about home kit. Um, but I just, yeah, I want, I want compatibility with everything. Me too. That's precisely <laughs> That's yeah. so what I'm hoping Do you for. think with the new homes, the, the new, uh, TV, TV app update and TV plus subscription coming out? Do you think Apple's going to give us another Apple TV this year? Maybe just a, a little bit a of a dub -dub. Maybe bump or something. What would you, what would, so. I mean, eventually they'll have to do 8K because Samsung is shipping 8K televisions, but they're not usually the first to do that kind of stuff. 
The only thing, so the big controversy right now is what devices the new operating systems are going to support because there was a really bad leak out of a French site that basically said a bunch of devices, but it, it didn't make any sense because there were no like consistency among it. And people started freaking out. Like right now, Apple's gotten rid of the A8 already be just because it's like there's almost nothing that still uses it, but except for the HomePod, um, the Apple TV, Apple calls it the Apple TV HD, the Apple TV 4, but Apple renamed it the Apple TV HD. And I think the iPod Touch. Um, so would they get rid of those? And then other people are, are concerned they're going to get rid of A9 uh, because Apple usually supports devices for four or five years, but that would mean the iPhone SE, um, the 6S, the 6S Plus, uh, and that's a bunch more stuff. I think it's the iPad Air 2. Was that an A8X? Will that go away? Will Apple just get rid of the smaller screens? Does that mean the iPod Touch and the iPhone SE goes away? So there's all this angst because they can't support it forever. You can't ask developers to support it forever because it means they have to go and test compatibility for older devices. But people still have those devices. So that's where, for the last few years, we've been lucky. It's been the same. We go back to the same. We're going to support <laughs> the same. But I think this year it might be different. We'll have to see. We might lose a little bit of that. Would, I think the, Would you be um, sad with the SE not being supported anymore? I, I, so here's my argument. I, I do think that the, um, that Apple will continue to support the SE because they actually only stopped selling it that stopped support or stopped selling it as one of their, um, you know, uh, entry level phones about two and a half years ago. Um, so, so even though, They're even so though the SE, <laughs> my, my significant other uses an iPhone SE. I, I love mine, but I don't use it as my daily because I have the iPhone XS. But my significant other, that's his iPhone. That's what he uses, an SE. And he loves it, and he's happy with it. And he doesn't even want to upgrade. And his is three years old now. And it still runs great. It has some issues every once in a while with you know battery life, or it's a little bit slow or something like that. But I don't think... I, I think Apple's going to keep keep supporting the SE, though there might be a couple of other smaller screen devices, like you're saying, Renee, maybe the, the iPod Touch, the sixth generation iPod Touch. But yeah. then again, this leads into the rumor of the next iteration of an iPod Touch. So if they, do, if they don't um, launch a new iPod Touch, I think they're going to continue to support what's out there. And then if they do launch a new iPod Touch, they might say, okay, everybody, you're your iPod touches from five years ago or four years ago are a little bit too old for us. So I, I don't know. I, I, I hear what you're saying. They've been supporting devices, backdate, backdated devices for so long that it seems like it's time, but I still think that those chips still work great and those devices still work great. And I think Apple is going to try to make sure that they continue to support those devices from that era, yeah, like the six, huge, the six right? Like they got rid of the non sixty four, the the old thirty two bit ones. They just cleaned the shelf, and that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. But there's, uh, it's gonna be interesting. Like one day they'll say nothing without a neural engine will be supported anymore. Oh, but that, that's yeah. so modern. Like that's just last year. So like, the, well, I guess a year and a half, a year and a half ago now. But there'll eventually be something else. It's just hard to figure out what that is. No, yeah, no I, uh, models without the emoji camera. <laughs> 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 Uh, oh, what was it? There was, um, oh yeah. So the other, I guess the other big thing is usually like, there's not always hardware. In fact, often there's no hardware at WWC, but we always kind of want to see it because hardware is toys and we want toys. Uh, and so the big rumor this year is we'll get a sneak peek of the new modular Mac pro and pro display. Mm -hmm. Like Tim, uh, Phil Schiller will come up on stage and say, not innovating anymore, my ass. And then we'll see like the, <laughs> the same thing as a trash can or John Turnus will come up and do the same thing he did with the, I, uh, iMac Pro, and it'll be like, bam, bam, boom, 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 and like, like big black steel flying across the stage, and then oh, I'll say, word. coming in December, bam. And then it oh, won't come in December. Had. It just <laughs> one ships by December 31st, every time they say that, Marie, at least one ship. That's, uh, that's, uh, yeah, no, I think it's time. Like, the <laughs> Mac Pro is two years since the they announced it. <laughs> it's time. It's it's time for that one to come out. And even if all they do is just show us some pretty pictures of what's to come, I think that would be really, a lot of people would be really happy to see that. It yeah. would be a big deal. Uh, what about, be, uh, though, the snark about that, I'm sure, though. 
And they yeah, only they showed us this early, but they don't well, have so it ready. So the thing is, like all developers, like there, there's sort of two problems. All developers really want is an updated trash can, not trash, an updated cheese grater. Like if if you want to make a lot of developers real real roll happy, just take that cheese grater, put modern stuff in it, and then let them swap all that stuff out to their nerdy little hearts content. But that's sort of like all they wanted was faster horses. And Apple just, they seem like religiously unable to do that. It's like it, it rankles everything in their bodies. So they're going to come up with something that'll be either genius or cockamamie. And like, <laughs> like a new, like a, a Lego system where you buy the, almost like a red camera where you buy the brain module and you can easily swap that out as better brains come out. And then the storage module, and you can swap that out as your storage needs change and the port module. So as T Thunderbolt 4 comes out, you can take out Thunderbolt 3 and put in Thor, but it's built like Lego and it's got proprietary high speed interconnects. So it's not, you can't just, everyone can't just make modules. And then some people will will think it works great, or God help them if it doesn't work great mm. at this point. <laughs> and it'll just be, why did you swing so cock at me? So it, like, and that's a risk. That's like a big risk every time they do it. But they seem to like force themselves to take that risk. I see. Well, I think the risk. I know. You know, there's the risk of things not going well, and why did you do it? But I am happy with risk, and I think risk leads to, you know, risk risk leads to better reward. And uh, I prefer that. <laughs> Roll damn dice. Well, like. Think about the Mac mini um, refresh that they did. I, I mean, I guess you can't just call it a free refresh because it was a complete redesign. Um, that I think was, it satisfied the people who use Mac mini in a way that that matters. You know, the people that yeah. need stackable Mac minis that, that use, you know, multiples as a server and they house all kinds of massive big things on it. That, that was a good thing. Everyone that I talked to that uses Mac mini more than just as a hobby device were very happy with the update. So Apple succeeded in that way. They, they figured out what the pros needed and they gave that to them. So then, it makes me think that this Mac Pro that they're working on, they're they're taking into consideration and they're listening to feedback and requests from the pros so that they can give them the cheese grater that they want. And you know, maybe they'll go overboard too far and make it Lego style, like you're saying, Renee, possibly. But I don't think it's gonna be the trash can that we saw of the Mac Pro. No. The, mo the last Mac Pro um, iteration. I think that they learned their lesson. And actually, I think they've even said that. They've learned their lesson. They are going to make it upgradable. And that's really what the pros want, is they want to be able to um, piece it together in their own way, with their own um, you know, separate individual aftermarket upgrading options. And also, years down the line, they also want to be able to upgrade, like you're saying, from Thunderbolt 3 to Thunderbolt 4 without having to buy a whole new computer to be able to do that. I think I think that they're I think they're on track to do that right and I think the part of the reason it's taken so long for them to release is they've probably been sort of watching the ebbs and flows of their other devices that they've launched over the last 2 years and what the pros are saying and what they're asking for and they're using that to um dis research and design for the Mac Pro because that one is going to be, you know, really expensive so they want to make sure that it's going to be everything to everybody that needs it which is it's impossible to to make everybody happy but i think they're that's why that's they're they're trying they're going to do what they're best to try to please as most people as possible yeah so that uh so mac pro won't have a butterfly mechanism <laughs> it will no it will it'll you. have a, it'll have the scissor mechanism because the the Desktops all have the scissor mechanism, yeah. so you're good with that. <laughs> yep. to go. And yep. they're going to come out with one with a uh, rose gold keyboard, which is <gasps> what I need to make me happy. So since they're, you know, got to check all those boxes, the box that says Sergeant comma M period, he needs a rose gold. Uh, Christina Warren's head snapped keyboard. around so fast. Yes. <laughs> and it's, what's funny, yeah, you go down to Warren comma C period, and it's the same thing. So, yeah. you know, you're pleasing two people, Apple. Get on it. <laughs> <laughs> um that there's lots of excitement for WWDC and of course uh you can stay posted to iMore and follow if you're not already Renee and, and Lori over on Twitter um so that you can keep track of what they'll be up to while they or have behind their, the scenes shenanigans their boots on the ground uh there and yeah all the fun stuff that's going on 
Um, we are running out of time, so I do want to uh, hit. What's your surprise? Well, it wasn't. So it was just a surprise <laughs> that it's like it's it's uh, not something that was in the thing. But you had mentioned uh, GIF wrapped or GIF wrapped or if you're Renee, if wrapped. Um, and Aww. I wanted to mention a, another fun new app that was just released. Uh, some of you folks probably listened to the Accidental Tech Podcast. Oh, my God. Or- Syracuse made a new app. No, not Syracuse. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, Renee. Um, and you may listen to what is it, Analog on Relay FM, wherever you heard of him. You Casey may cards. Heard good old Casey Liss. Uh, and Casey Liss created an app that I have didn't know that I wanted, but was right? a thing that I wanted for forever. Uh, it's an app called Vignette, uh, which you can get in the App Store. And what Vignette does is so handy you in your contacts you probably have lots of people that show up as a gray circle with some um initials in it and vignette takes your contacts listing and scans them and finds like you if you've got their twitter name in there if you've got their email in there if you've got different social profiles and then helps you load up the uh contact card with a photo of that person so it looks at gravatar it looks at twitter it looks at all sorts of different online sites can i add something micah yeah of course like this app would be worth like inordinate amount of money to me alone just for the gravatars because everyone set those up like 10 years ago and forgot about them and they're the best pictures of your friends that you have yes. never seen they are so <laughs> young and dorky and and duck mouth, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, and so it's a handy app for for doing that. You uh, can you know do the scan. You get to go down and sort of choose what image you want to go with it. There are some fun little settings, and my favorite thing, uh, Casey has included some nice subtle haptics in the app as well, which I always enjoy. So. Um, you can check that out. It, it's free with an in-app purchase. The in-app purchase basically lets you save uh, the scans that you've done so that you can sort of hop back in and, and make changes there. Um, so yeah, it's called Vignette. It's so nice to have uh, contact photos for folks that I have not had contact photos for so far. And it helped me go in and clean some contacts out that I didn't need anymore. Because, you know, the eye doctor says you're not supposed to leave those contacts in for too long. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Good one. That was such Thank a dad you. joke. Thank you. You know, I try. I try. Oh, snap, Lindo. Uh, Henry and Mizzy rolled their eyes from the other room. Oh, dad's <laughs> oh, making God. dad jokes again. Here we go. Um, so check out Vignette. And, uh, yeah, that was that was my mind that I wanted to mention. So GIF, GIF, if. Biff wrapped also got an update. Yes. Yeah. You know, I, the thing is, so I use Giphy so much for all of my, all of my GIF, GIF, if, um, <laughs> related. <laughs> We're going to do it like we do it if he's mas macho. Oh, you know, yeah. I think, you know what I'm going to do? I'm, I'm going to make a stand. Everybody says words their own way. I'm making a stand right now. It doesn't matter what it's supposed to be. I'm going to say GIF. That's so you fine. can say it however you want. I love you for it. I'm just going to say GIF. I'm Amen. not saying it wrong. I'm saying it my way. So Boom. there you go. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, so I, I, what's, I just love this new design. It just has like a, such an easy way to search for things. And I just wanted to drop it in there because everybody loves a good GIF. GIF. <laughs> uh. <laughs> and uh, if, you know, if you're looking for a different method of um, getting your your adorable, hilarious memes to your friends when you're sending messages to them, try gift wrap because it's it's something to it's something different. It's kind of yeah, fun. We know, has, we know one of the villains behind this, don't we? Yes, we do. Yes, we yeah. do. Uh, he go, yeah, he goes his uh well yeah, what is his his uh fake name that he always goes by? Jelly is is kind yes. of uh what he's he, shifty and also apparently shifty. Mark Edwards helped with this. Uh so it's oh. it's a company of our favorite people. Oh okay I didn't realize that. Um yeah, it's uh, Daniel Frelli, and he has in the past made um, 
made a lovely avatar of me and my dog yes. in cartoon form. And um, he's an excellent artist. Uh, and GIF Wrapped is an excellent app um, for you to sort of save your own collection of, mm -hmm. of uh, reaction GIFs. So do check that out as well while we're supporting independent uh, developers. And uh, so you can update your contact photos. And then once you've got photos for them, then you can send them a bunch of annoying GIFs uh, and load them down with, uh, with good stuff there. Um, so be sure to check those out. We'll include links to those in the show notes. Um, I think uh, that's, that's going to do it for us this week. I want to, of course, thank you all out there for listening. Uh, I want to thank Jim Metzendorf for editing the show and making us sound excellent each week and for being our awesome pal who we get to chat with uh what <laughs> round about the time that the the show goes up or we're getting ready for it each week is uh a, quite a blessing there and beautiful selfie bombs uh, I just and those enjoy. yes excellent selfie bombs um if georgia dow were here she'd tell you that maybe Maybe you could find her on Twitter at Georgia underscore Dow, uh, but you can, of course, check out anxiety-videos.com for excellent videos on um, setting boundaries, on emotional intelligence, on depression, anxiety, parenting, lots of great videos uh, for all sorts of self-help content. And uh, Lori Gill, the people are looking to get in touch with you, how can they do so? Uh, they can follow me on Twitter at Appaholic, that's A-P-P-A-H-O-L-I-K. And I'm going to be live tweeting so many selfies of Dub Dub with as many people as I possibly can. It's going to yeah. be fun and hilarious. Oh, you have the Fairy <laughs> Caldwell goofy face uh, legacy to live up to. <laughs> oh no! Oh man! <laughs> yeah, now I can now make a goofy trouble. face though, so I think I can. I think I can hold my own. Maybe not as good as hers, but I can hold my own. <laughs> awesome. awesome! And uh, at Lori Gill and other social stuffs. Thank you. Yes. Perfect. Uh, Renee Ritchie. How can people check out Vector and get in touch with you and follow you and see your goofy faces? Uh, my goofy face is all over at Renee Ritchie and all the social things. You can go to imore.com slash Vector for my written words. You can subscribe to Vector in your podcast app of choice for the tech, for the audio version. And for the full on video experience, you can go to youtube.com slash Vector Show. And uh, yeah, Michael, you do this so well. It's always a pleasure to be on a podcast with you. Oh, thanks. Um, if you if you want to check out the stuff that I do, you can head to chihuahua.coffee. That's C-H-I-H-U-A-H-U-A dot coffee. Uh, you can also follow me on pretty much every social thing at Micah Sargent. Um, we will be back next week with more as uh, we creep ever closer to the big event. Uh, thank you so much again for listening. I hope, depending on when you're listening to this, you have a great week or weekend. This has been The iMore Show. Well, yeah, happy Memorial Day to you and Laura. You got a long weekend. It's Memorial